Holy Thursday is, in a sense, a double celebration for us Catholics. It commemorates the institution of the Most Holy Eucharist, the Mass, and the founding of the Holy Priesthood. On Holy Thursday, we have two beautiful liturgical celebrations. On the morning of Holy Thursday, the Chrism Mass, where, if at all possible, the bishop gathers all the priests of the diocese and they reaffirm their commitment to the service of Christ and his people in the priesthood. Then, on the evening of Holy Thursday, we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, where we, whereby we commemorate the institution of the Holy Eucharist and, correspondingly, the Holy Priesthood. These two sacraments are inextricably linked. Jesus had, has made things so interdependent within our faith. We should pray for vocations to the priesthood, for without the priest there is no Eucharist, and without the Eucharist there is no church, without the church there is no priesthood, and so it's a circle. In each and every Mass, those two sacraments, Holy Orders and the Holy Eucharist, come into play. Holy Orders, the priesthood, reaches its greatest potential and fruitfulness when it is placed at the service of the Mass. In each and every Mass, that once-for-all sacrifice of Christ Jesus on Calvary is made present. It's not repeated, not reenacted, but made present in a real, though sacramental way, in the offering of the bread and wine, which become, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the words spoken by the priest, really and truly the most sacred, most holy body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. When the priest says the words of consecration, this is my body, this is the chalice of my blood. It is Christ who speaks those words. Christ who uses a mere sinner like me. Christ who allows the priest, a man who shares the same weaknesses and sinful tendencies as anyone else, to act in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. And so at the Mass, it is Christ who changes bread and wine into his body and blood though outwardly they still look like bread and wine. And that's where faith needs to look beyond what the senses tell. It is not holy bread and holy wine, not blessed bread and blessed wine. It is the body and blood of Christ. And if we imagine how carefully and lovingly the Blessed Virgin treated the lifeless body which she received from the cross on Good Friday, and with how much joy and worship she must have embraced that same body, now risen on Easter Sunday morning, then we can get an idea of how we should treat the Lord Jesus, how we should treat his living and life-giving body and blood in the Eucharist we receive at Mass. Of course, the pandemic has severely restricted our people's access to the Mass for more than a year now. It is a particularly sad state of affairs here in Ireland. As all throughout the pandemic, you could always easily go to an off-license to purchase alcohol so as to intoxicate your body. And tragically, you could have access to abortion services to get rid of the body of the little unborn. But it has become a punishable offence to go to Mass and receive the body of Christ. On this great feast day, I invite each of us to examine our past attitude pre-pandemic to Jesus in the Eucharist when access to the Mass and Holy Communion was easily available and straightforward. Familiarity might not have bred contempt for the Eucharist, but it might have made us complacent, undervaluing the great gift that it is. I think when access to public worship is restored, please God, we will all appreciate more deeply and carefully the gift of Holy Communion. That might be the only silver lining in what 
has been a horrendously difficult time for those of us who are fully committed to our Catholic faith. Complacency is something we priests in particular can fall into very easily. It is a constant danger that, as a priest, I will become too familiar with the sacred and treat as ordinary what is in fact extraordinary. After so many years being a priest, I could probably say Mass with my eyes closed, but saying Mass and praying Mass are two very different things. I and all my brother priests have to constantly fight against the benumbing effect of routine and familiarity with the sacraments we daily administer, especially the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Woe to me if I fail to treat holy things in a holy way. The Holy Eucharist is the gift of love from the heart of Jesus himself. The Eucharist is, according to St. Augustine, the sacramentum caritatis, the sacrament of love. And love calls for a response. It is said that St. Francis went through the streets of Assisi crying out, O oh, love is not loved, love is not loved. May he never be able to say that about us individually or about us as a believing community. The Eucharist is the greatest gift God can give us. If I were offered all the blessings of heaven and earth, every grace and every good thing from the hand of God, it is, in a sense, nothing compared to the gift I would receive in one Holy Communion well received. For then I would welcome into my soul not God's blessing, not God's grace, but God himself, the source of every grace and blessing, Jesus Christ. In Holy Communion, we do not receive something. We receive someone, Jesus Christ. In our churches, tabernacles, we do not have something holy, but the Holy One himself. Let us never forget the holiness of our churches, because there, God dwells among us in the Eucharist. There is a Canadian blessed, blessed Dina Bellinger, and this is what she wrote about the great gift of Jesus remaining with us in the Eucharist. And what she says will confirm for all of you who cherish the Holy Eucharist what you already implicitly know. This is what she wrote. If souls but understood the treasure they possess in the Divine Eucharist, it would be necessary to encircle the tabernacles with the strongest of ramparts, for in the delirium of a devouring and a holy hunger, people would press forward themselves to feed on the bread of angels. The churches would overflow with adorers consumed with love for the Divine Prisoner, no less by night than by day. Certainly, after several months of such severe restrictions placed on us by the government, it is to be hoped that, as indicated by them a few days ago, by the beginning of May, we will once again be able to return to public worship and the reception of Holy Communion. And it is to be equally hoped that when that blessed day arrives, we will experience something of that devouring and holy hunger for the bread of angels that Blessed Dina speaks of. May the Holy Spirit stir it up in us so that the new normal that we keep hearing about during this pandemic will mean for men and women of faith a complete renewal in our experience of and love for Jesus in the most holy Eucharist. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. I love you, Jesus, in the most holy sacrament of the altar.